We have um, pioneered uh, low power, very high performance microprocessors that power hyperscale data centers. And as we see this incredible growth in AI and the desire to have you know, AI everywhere, AI data centers take tremendous amount of power, substantially more power than a traditional data center. And um, one of the ways to curtail that power is to work on lower lower power um, hardware, and that's what we do. And we've pioneered that, because it had historically been the case that low power equaled low performance, and um, I think we put an end to that, and so we're excited about our future. Low power is the key, because as we think about the biggest challenger in the room, that is NVIDIA, but it doesn't necessarily come with low power or efficiency on that side, despite uh, more GPU updates that we see every other year now, a 12 month basis, right? From every other player I've heard, look, you need to conquer the efficiency side, because it does cost businesses money to run these data centers, and while we might be talking about lower energy prices right now, that's not always the case in future, and also as we work towards a more sustainable future. Yeah. How do you talk about your company in the vein now as a challenger to NVIDIA? Are you any closer to shrinking that enormous moat that it seems to have built up? Well, that, these, are, um, these are important discussions. You had a guest on this morning from Vesta talking about renewables and um, the importance of how we're going to be able to power these data centers. I think most, most of your viewers may not realize this, but a traditional AI data center takes um, the, um, the power of 100,000 homes, if you will. And the largest AI data center that's being considered right now takes 25 times more power than that. So when you think about how we want to grow the economy and how we think AI will be pervasive and everywhere and helping many industries transform, the, the limiter, the key limiter is going to be the access to power and power distribution on the grid and the ability to support um, the build out that people want. So what we've been doing is working on um, processors that can do inference uh, w very efficiently, which is that, if you will, think about it as AI search. It's the easiest way for people who aren't into yeah, AI no to think about, about it, AI um, versus AI training, which is training the large models, which does take a tremendous amount of power, um, which is really the forte of NVIDIA today. I think um, given the performance improvements uh, year over year in GPUs, very much targeted at the early days and the early stages, which is about training these new models, um, you could say they're becoming more efficient because you're getting more performance, but the truth of the matter is the power continues to increase. So we are gonna have to go to work on that. And I think everybody in semiconductors has known that for a long time. Um, most people who know me know that I've been in semis a long time. I pioneered um, high performance, high power <laughs> microprocessors in my career at Intel. And um, when I started Ampere, I was most excited about this part of semiconductor technology that was not pioneered. And I didn't even know at the time the implication long term on power efficiency in data centers yeah. as it relates to AI. Renee, I, believe it or not, on air and off air, I've had a lot of conversations about this with some some, probably some rivals and some people probably yeah. a different part of the distribution chain as well. And they say one of, one of the most influential people involved in US um, data center build said to me, he said, the problem is in the States, they think one way, in the China, they think the other. In latter, in China, they think about big grid, big solutions, right. long-term planning. In the States, he was saying, quite frankly, there's very little of that and it's all about local solutions. Is that accurate? Well, I don't know if that's accurate because I'm not a, a specialist on grid and all of the um, you know, activities and build out. There is power available in different jurisdictions, but you know that data centers are concentrated today, like in Virginia, where it's 25% yeah. of the grid is being used for data centers. Um, and so what I think is happening is we're going to have to see a disbursement. That's going to be true in Europe as well, because what you see is the inability to support the continued growth in these consolidated sections. We have something that I think is super important, hasn't been part of the discussion, which is brownfield sites, enterprise data centers that are already have power, but they haven't been revitalized. And so one thing that we've been working on that I think is important, I expect people are gonna follow us, which is the ability to stay in an air-cooled environment, not have to bring in you know, water cooling and all of these new technologies, and deploy AI into some of these existing more edge data centers. I think that's gonna be one of the solutions in addition to renewables because you're not gonna be able to re-engineer all these grids. No.
that's not feasible. I mean, maybe in China. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe in China. <laughs> maybe yeah. in China. Let me ask you about the SoftBank deal. Ampere set to be acquired by SoftBank in a deal worth $6.5 billion. Help us understand the strategic rationale, what SoftBank is looking to get out of this acquisition. Um, so, of course, like all acquisitions, I'll tell you the normal thing that everyone on CNBC says, which is we are pending um, regulatory approval. So I don't have much to say on that other than to say that we've pioneered um, using ARM Technologies, which, as you know, is also a SoftBank company, and we've done something I've, revolutionary and are leaders in it. And I think that as part of Masasan's you know, larger vision for AI infrastructure, it's a key component to the ability to build out data centers, both large AI data centers as well as these regional 